No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. We're clocking in at 3.50, and uh, we're officially in Atlanta. I'm with my man, Remo, and we're having a conversation with the talk of the town, Lil Woody. I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling like money. Yeah? Yeah, for real. It feels good. you just running around picking up bags every day now? You see, I'm confused about it. I don't even know who the hell I'm picking up money from. Yeah, yeah. You book, you uh, double booked today, right? Hold on. This damn shit got there on the stuck my damn pants. Oh, Velcro <laughs> down there? Oh, it's because you got these crazy... Uh, oh. <laughs> you got yeah. the crazy pants. Good. Nice. Yeah, I'm stuck What's that? Purple, purple level jeans? What kind of jeans is them? Oh, uh... Valabasas. Valabasas? Oh, yeah. You got the Valabasas. Well, they need to start paying me. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah, right. rocking them. Dang, yeah. that shit. I like full, too. Now they empty. I need y'all to fill them up. Yeah. But yeah. it sucks. Everything's electronic now, right? They still don't fill them up. You would rather get paid in cash or via one of the payment apps? I'd rather get paid. Paid. Don't matter. Don't matter. Right. As long as I got it. You know, a lot of people, when we're moving around here, they're... they're the conversation is like, damn, how, how is Woody just moving around the city, becoming such a star so casually? Like, to what would you explain that? Shit, people ask me, who am I? I'm, like, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. So it's kind of confusing to you why people even want to? Ain't that confusion about their money. Right. That's all I'm focused on. Right. But does it ever surprise you that your presence in videos is almost like a guaranteed millions of views? To be honest with you, I, I, I don't really pay no attention. I just collect the money. Mm. Um, I don't know if it be having me views if somebody sent it to me. Right. So, so you don't do the follow-up work after the crazy viral 20 versus 1s? Like the, you're not interested to go read the comment section or anything like that? Cause I got I got anger issue. So yeah. if I read comments, and there's people I don't never see, so I, ain't no purpose in me making myself mad for no reason. Right. No, I respect that. For sure. Um, okay, so there's a lot of different ways that we could take this. Uh, you want to start with a little bit of the, the early days? Yeah, let's start from the beginning. Where's the beginning? You tell us. All right, so you born in Atlanta, right? Born and raised? For sure. Mechanicsville, right? It's in my face. All right, so break that down for people going from Atlanta. What are, where is Mechanicsville? Mechanicsville by the old Turner Field, Zone 3, Ralph David Avenue. Not the other side. Yo. Um... Yeah, Matt Daniel, uh, yeah, all the streets, shit, I don't know. That's the whole time we need you. No, we're still trying <laughs> to figure out, like, exactly uh, what what every different part of Atlanta is like. So, would you say it's more of, like, a a, a, a lower quality of life out there than, like, uh, most of the spots we've been out in? Oh, you talking about, like, how the community is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell yeah me how's the community? Like oh, man, they're the bad hood in Atlanta. We're going to go get it. Hmm. What zone is that considered? Three. Oh, that's zone three. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's zone three. Shit, coming up in the hood though. You know, we had people out there that showed us how to get our own money. Right. So. So from day one, that was always a, a consistent presence. You were taught to hustle. Um, uh, not from day one, but from when I got on my got on my own. Yeah, I had pe older people around me teach me how to get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the ski low. Um, uh, we gonna go get it. What do, you, what do you think are, like, the, the main things that help turn you into the person that you are? Because I know you had uh, 10 brothers and sisters, but that's one thing that uh, Young Dro said to me yesterday. He was like, if you're going to sit down with that man, fuck all the current shit, fuck all the drama or whatever. I want you to just find out what made that man who he really is. Whew. Um, losing my mom. At what age? Huh? What age? I was 17. Okay. Yeah, when, when she died, she died unexpectedly, like, she, she just, just died, it was quick, so it was like, I felt like the hospital killed her, and then I had a vendetta against, you know, the hospital and anybody who pissed me off, so that would draw me down the path that I took, because I didn't care, but I started to care once I had my little girl, which was in October, I mean, June 2014. Uh-huh. So I was already, like, I had did so much stuff that my country was at me. I was like, dang, I got beer for my child. So then my friend had just got killed. Shh, I ain't letting that go. So you feel like losing your mom made you lose some of your humanity? And then having a child brought a lot of it back? Nah, losing my mom made me feel like I was in the world by myself. Mm. It was just me. And shh, 
I had a point of proof because nobody tell me nothing. So, with that attitude, that what I did, I took to the street harder. It's already when I was a little kid, I grew up with my family. I didn't hang with people in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And th- until when she died, then I started hanging with niggas in the neighborhood. Was, yeah. was your pops in your life? Yeah, but he you know he died on um, 2001. I was standing born home at the time. Um, he died for cancer, but the same night he died, he had had a car wreck. He flew out the window, and um, yeah, he died. But, and you got ten siblings. Yeah, I got six sisters and they four boys. How do you think that impacted you? What you mean? In terms of just like uh, having that many different people around you, did it make you more responsible because you felt like you had to help take care of them? Or did it make you feel like you had to fight for attention from your parents? So when I took to the street, I removed myself from my family. Mm. I mean, like, I just stayed away. I, I, I hung out in the streets all the time. I had my grandma, you know what I mean? And my grandma was with me. No, Nobody couldn't control me, though, so, yeah. So where uh, did you and your siblings live once you lost your mom? Uh, so when my mama died, I had stayed, started moving. I had moved with my older sister, sister. She was staying in Bankhead Court, like right the last little part that they tore down. When she died, that was like oh oh eight. Um, and everybody had kind of scattered up. But when my mama was alive, most of the time we all stayed together. Yeah, and then how's our relationship to this day? Who? Like all your family? Uh, well, I always felt like the special child because. I have a, a you know a relationship with all my brothers and sisters. It's not one on that I don't get along with. I might not like them for some time, but yeah. But the way I see them treat each other, I feel like I'm a special one because they all treat me with love. And they still all alive and around them. Hell yeah. All right, yeah for sure. But is it weird for you to have gone from like I can assume like you were probably the dude in the family who had the most criminal problems, and they looked at you as somebody who had, was in kind of like a fucked up state to now where like you're running around, you're like a celebrity, you're making all this money and stuff. Like, does that change how you fit into the family? Well, I um, I never even took the time now to just pay attention to that. But, man, before all this stuff turned in my favor, I, I was back in that mindset, like, it's just me. You feel me? So, that's, that's still my mindset now because I feel like a lot of people pick sides. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of people jump to the conclusion. I'm a hustler, you feel me? Like, if y'all think the money gonna ever stop, it ain't it never gonna stop with me. So when people feel like I ain't had the money that I was used to having, they, they didn't, they, I didn't benefit them. Family and all, so. Now with the situation, now, you know, I, I got a pure heart, so I still gonna help my family out. Mm. But when it comes to people in the street, a lot, lot of people trying to call me and ask for money now. I, I give a few on some money, I ain't gonna lie. But I really don't fuck with these niggas, like, so. You but, feel like a lot of people turn their back on you? Um... I don't give a fuck, but it's just like, um, they trying to come back. That's what angered me. Like, stay with y'all at. Because I, I gave y'all the shirt off my back. Can't nobody ever say they did more for me than I did for them. So when everybody pit side want to eat, eat a nigga dick, eat that motherfucker. Stay where you at. For sure. Do you, do you feel like you were somebody, were you more motivated by like, doing things on behalf of your hood, or do you feel like you were always, like, hustling selfishly when you were in your younger days? Um, I just did things just, cause I like to see people happy. So, uh, I did stuff from my heart. Anytime, anything I ever did was just because I wanted to do it. Um, so, yeah, but after, after, after I went through the process, I felt like I was buying friends, because I look back on the stuff I was doing, like, damn, they were, none of that went genuine. Mm. You feel me? Like, yeah, inside of people already know the risks that I don't took. So it's like, oh, you quit say so. You've been hating all, all along. You feel what I'm saying? But you know me. You know you don't want to piss me off. So that's why I just leave these niggas alone, because if they piss me off, I promise you, they better hope I'm in their cash. Damn, for sure. Um, okay, so what was the environment like at your mom's house growing up? Um... Uh, Shit, it was 10 of us in a two-bedroom. And we had bunk beds, two bunk beds in one room. Mm. So, And my mama didn't play about her house. So imagine a sparkly clean house with 10 people trying to live in here. And can't nobody sleep in the living room. She wouldn't allow that? Hell no, she wouldn't allow that. Wow. So what, what kind of environment did that create for you? Where you had to be like super organized, but then also it was like everybody on top of each other? 
Nah, nah. Um, I thought it was a situation where you said you grew up in a trap house, kind of. It was. All right, so it was a trap house. So just because it's a trap house, they don't mean it dirty. No, I'm not saying dirty, though, but yeah. in a sense, though, you grew up around seeing that type of... Made you want to be a hustler? Nah, I felt like um, that wasn't my... Um, yeah, that wasn't something that I like. I didn't... Selling drugs was not never going to be me. Mm-hmm. But the, the hustling ambitious was... Like, I, how could I put this? I found a new hustle. We call it smash and grab. So that was my motto. Yeah. When did you figure that out? Some people taught me. And once I once I once I learned that, that was better than anything. Uh-huh. Yeah. What was it about selling drugs that you weren't attracted to? Um, I had love for the people that I seen buying it. Mm. Um I grew up with them. And I didn't judge them because of the choices that they choose to make, but I wasn't gonna poison them. So mm. Now that's like a sign of intelligence, I think, because a lot of people are able to kinda like sell drugs for a long time without necessarily thinking about the impact it's having on their own community. Right. So somebody I know, I ain't going to say too much about this person, but somebody I know, his whole life was based off of hustling. And now he lost, he don't, he don't, he don't want to do that no more, but he lost now. He don't know how to get no money no other way because mm. he don't did that for so long. And he trying to change his life around, but it's hard for him to, to do anything else. Mm-hmm. So. Who are the blue jean bandits? Me. Is it just yeah. you or was it a squad? I'm only gonna speak of myself like that. Yeah. But that was the smash and grab era? That what the news say. Mm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Are those fond memories or is that a, a time that you look back on and you're like, damn, what was I doing? I stay reflecting on them. Cause it, it was fun. We, we, I mean, the whole neighborhood going in and get their free money. Yeah, police chasing us. They, they didn't even. They never scared us. We would go get five seat cars just because we went want the police to chase us. Uh-huh. Yeah. You like you like you like adrenaline and shit, right? Yeah. Yeah, cause I seen you got a vlog you recently did where you was driving uh the Hellcats and shit. Man, but they loved it. Everywhere yeah. I go, people bring up their video. And I went viral and shit. Yeah. So where did y'all? When did you start like learning how to drive cars and shit? Cause it seemed like you we whipping that shit like fast and furious. Yeah, I had like probably like twenty some coverage. What do you uh, what do you blame for that? What you mean? I'm prepared. So you know what I mean? Like I ain't scared. So that how that how my my driving skills got better. So when the police chase me, they cut the lights and sirens on, get close up on me. I don't panic. Cause I know that police can't do what I can do. He care about he like I care about my life too, but uh, they more scared than me. So I can't let I can't let myself think that I'm scared because I'm a panic and do something stupid. So when you're in the high speed, it's all about just pure confidence and willingness to take extreme risks or what? No, nah, it's just about, I, I got on high speed chase and when I pulled over to get a police time, get out the car. It's just how you do it. You feel me? I pulled over, give him time, get out, he ain't get out. Instead of me taking off, I just bust you U-turn and go the other way. He got to do the same thing. By the time he turn around, I'll hit two, three streets, I'm out of there. It's just the strategy that you put in it. Don't try to take them on the long high speed. Because if I'm riding and he close behind me, I know he don't want to see me on feet. So I'm just going to get him the feet. You're going to get me or the car. You ain't getting both of them. Holy shit. You ever got caught in them high speeds, though? Never. Never? I got caught on one high speed chase. Yeah. My whole entire life. Maybe because everybody followed me. But I got away. Yeah, so yeah. And it was on my birthday. Damn, it was on your birthday. <laughs> what year was this? How old? How... 2009. Oh, yeah, it's early on. Yeah. So what's what's uh, cause what's thirty deep? I hear you say that's like your crew you was running with. No, uh, that's my neighborhood. That's that's the name of the neighborhood. Yeah. And that's in Mechanicsville, right? For sure. And you was in Bowen Homes, cause it ain't ain't yeah. Shotty Low from out there. Yeah, Shotty Low. Yeah, he's right around when I was staying out there. Yeah. They had so, a uh, Ukraine truck, whatever it was, with big rims on there, TVs all in it. Yeah, I grew up around a lot of people. Joe, I mean, right before Joe got famous, we was on Cooper Street together. Now I mean, I just left at Joe. He funny, cool as hell, but yeah, she like I watch him blow up the next day. Seeing him today, the next day he got them shoulder lean and all over the TV. So seeing all these people who are successful off music and everything, did that make you have that motivation to do something in entertainment early on, or were you still just solely focused on the streets? 
Wait, you didn't Thug, start rapping until later, right? Yeah, but Thug made a believe out of this. Because, mm. you know what I mean? We watch him for so long, try, try, but we like, man. After so long go by, you like, man, give up. But when he made it, like, oh, damn, you can really make it. And then what really inspired me, though, was when I was in the feds, and I heard Lil Baby on the radio. Mm. Like, damn, I just, this nigga don't want them to gamble. This nigga rapping. And then, you know, see him go all the way through the roof, it's just like, oh, wow, this this, this real. How close were you to Lil Baby prior to him blowing up? Uh, I wasn't close to him. You know, I see him around, like, back in that time, I wasn't friendly, so... You know, I, if I see you with us, I lock your face in and just know you with us. But I didn't really, like, I didn't really engage with him that much. That was just, like, a survival mechanism that you learned to just, like, not get too friendly with people that you met? Uh, no, it's, it's just, I grew up different in my neighborhood. I watched so much slime shit, like, from a little kid. So I just, I didn't embrace people from other neighborhoods uh, so quick. Mm. You feel me? But... People from other neighborhoods show more love than the ones in your own neighborhood. Mm. But it took me a minute to realize that. Yeah, so when you start branching out from your neighborhood? Like when um, you said you started like... When I started like... Just rotating around the city like, all right, I'm going to start kicking it with other people. Um, my, when my best friend got killed, um, man, I, I was doing so much stuff. And then I met some dudes that were like, man, we got your back. And then they, they started doing stuff. When they start doing stuff, that, that right there was enough for me because it's like, people talk that, but for somebody to actually ride for the dead, they mean more to me than anything. Because I see niggas, oh man, I'm, I love my nigga, and your nigga dead, you ain't get no screening. So to have somebody try to get some smoke about my friend, it meant a lot to me. So I started, I locked in with them, and just so happened, they were locked in with a lot of other people from different hoods. That's crazy. I, I've heard that sentiment from a lot of people is that when it comes time for revenge, that's when you really figure out what people are made of. Right. Because I be I be watch, I be laughing at the internet. All these dudes who be talking about me, I be laughing like, you got so much to say about me, your partner got smoked, or you got pumped out. Oh, but you the same one tried to speak to me. You feel what I'm saying? I be laughing, but can't nobody say it about me. Anytime anyone of my friend got smoked, I was there in self a threat because I know they watching me. Mm. You know what I mean? But And threat recently passed away, is that because yeah. I seen you posted on your story this like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I don't even follow the story. I ain't never asked nobody what happened to him or nothing because it's like I can't I can't say I'm gonna change and then go back into that mindset. Threat new threat new life. I had a conversation with Threat before he died and like look, bro, um, you can't just be out here doing what you're doing. You feel what I'm saying? Threat was the type of person he he liked to intimidate people. Yeah. And then you put yourself in harm's way. I ain't trying to intimidate nobody. I'm going to tell y'all the real. Let's leave me alone. If I feel like I got to intimidate you, we're going gonna to get it out of the way. I'm going to let you know we got a problem. So you feel like Threat had a whole bunch of people scared of him, so. Nah, he did. Yeah. But he played with people. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't. Even though I don't want to skip to here, the only reason I'm going to bring this one up is because recently, uh, you know, your trial's going viral. On the trial, you said uh, you and Threat was sliding, and y'all shot out Rich Homie Kwan Barbershop. And that went viral. Yeah, like Rich Homie said, I was just lying. Yeah. So what? what's your thoughts on Rich Homie Kwan passing? Yeah. It's sad, man. It's sad. Rich Homie had a lot of potential. You feel me? Like, he just made the wrong choice in the past. What well, could have, um, that hurt his career. And he didn't have to make, he didn't have to make that choice. But sometimes people got to learn how to stand up for themselves. Don't, don't be intimidated by no group of people. Cause them group of people, man, they ain't know that for real. You yeah. feel me? That's why they a group of people. All you had to do is stay by yourself. He would have been successful. As he would have been bigger than what he was. But you don't feel like he had to pick sides? It seems like a lot of people in Atlanta had to pick sides at one point or another. Be you. You feel me? Like it's your life. It's your heart. You already made it. You don't need. You don't need. What what size? This is my side. Right now, I don't care what nobody said, how nobody feel about me. I pick my own side. If anybody wants to smoke, be for real with me. But so you wouldn't have been able to say that you were just going to be a, a lone wolf back then, right? I, I was. I was doing I always been on my own, doing what I wanted to do. Mm. People just tie me to YSL. Right. You know what I mean? I was doing what I Otherwise, if you ever pay attention, I always, I'm from a Canterville. Mm. I go to war with whoever. 
from your perspective though what kind of person was rich homie like a lot of people right now are reflecting on his life and his legacy and everything rich homie was a good person man like i said he was he was forced in a certain position you feel me i would never post him if i didn't feel he was a good person mm. you know what i mean it's just like you know the page came in between everything i had a i had a whole conversation with him and you know he was telling me like he was telling me like certain stuff, you feel what I'm saying? Where it's like he wasn't running his he wasn't the ball wasn't in his court. Mm. I guess he didn't know how big he was, I don't know. So Cause like from a fan perspective, it felt like he was one of the biggest rappers and then shit just all of a sudden just turned off. Yeah, because he seen he picked the wrong side. Mm. Yeah, so you feel like all right, so you saying that he was signed to Think It's a Game, and I know they hang out with Wild Finn and them, so you feel like that kind of hindered his career? Him not being able to be as cool with Thug? He ended his career when he chose to go against Thug. But how did he choose to go against Thug? Oh, making that? All right, so there's two different things. Like he said, he had, all right, where, what's your perspective of him going against Thug? Um, Could you know more? So he started going to shows and started talking about Thug. See, Thug was always, you know, rich homie, my boy. Yeah. And then he went saying, Told somebody get away from me, looking like a young thug, and he went on stage. Ah, oh, they does. Cracking jokes on him a little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. And one thing about it, anybody who know thug, he got a great heart. And you know him, all that missing him with all that other stuff, that rainbow stuff, like that ain't him. Mm. So when you go to speaking on him like that, and he know you know him, yeah, he just, he, you know, what I mean, he just prefer to move himself from you. But was that was that rich homie doing that because little shit was happening behind the scenes, so he had a reason to be mad? Like his dad barbershop getting shot up. Oh, that's like way before that. He was just on that. That barbershop don't have nothing to do with uh, nothing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That barbershop just on some bank heads type stuff. Yeah. Like I told you, I grew up in Born Home, so. <laughs> so he didn't have a he didn't have a reason to to go out and just go on stage and say that he was just really just choosing sides. So when the barbershop happened, Doug and Rich Homer was cool. All right. Uh, to be honest, that's how me and Thug got together. Yeah. So how did you meet Thug? <laughs> I guess you didn't get hit me. Through Rich Homie? <laughs> Break it down again. It's still an open case. All right, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, man. But, yeah, me and Thug, you know, he called me out of the blue. Yeah. And, you know, we talked, and this, this one, me and him, I always, I, you know, we already knew who each other was, but me and him never hung, hung. Like, I just go in the house, shoot dice. My brother was tit. Slug, so we we start going. They start they bring me around, and at the time my best friend had got killed, so I was out there on some who won't smoke. Yeah, yeah. And who was Tick to you? How you how you meet Tick? How y'all been rotating and shit? Um, so I actually got real cool with Tick through um, my nigga Ei. Um, him and Tick were locked up in juvenile together, and they they bonded. I was on that, I ain't hanging with nobody type of time. But when my best friend got killed, you know, me and Tit was just, I don't know how we really just lock in, but we locked in and shit, it been there ever since. Yeah. Yeah. So you and Tit still got like a relationship to this day or? For sure. But you know, you know what I mean, due to his freedom, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no communication with us. So yeah, so uh, how do you feel with the jacket that's been labeled on, you know what I'm saying, with everybody, the interrogation videos leaked and everybody have this, uh, have their way of thinking about you now and shit. Like, how do you take that? How do you feel about people calling you, labeling you a snitch? Uh, it's all, it's on, it's on, on the internet. I haven't ran to one person that said it to my face. And I, and I ain't saying like on no gangster stuff. Like, I, I pray that nobody don't provoke me. You feel what I'm saying? Because I ain't mess with nobody. I ain't looking for trouble, so. If I see if I'm out and somebody walk up and say I'm a snitch or whatever, I'm slap shadow, I'm gonna bust from one or the other. When did uh when did you actually have to start like going to the police station and they started contacting you? Yeah, what was that decision like? Yeah, when was this decision and like what year would you say like they started really just like contacting you a lot? Uh when it when it when it you know, when it when that certain stuff took place. Yeah. So after nut passed, that's when really they was on you? Because you yeah. got picked up that same day, right? No, they didn't pick me up, so um Something happened, and somebody called me, be like, hey, the investigators want to talk to you. And I'm like, shh, what are they going to talk to me for? You know what I mean? I ain't going out there and talk to them. Yeah. But somebody else was like, nah, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever. You 
So I went. And then this thing, no, shit, they let me go, but they started. Everybody in the London started saying, I did this. That's why I don't care. Everybody in the London said, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. They could kiss my ass. Yeah. Yeah, I be talking. Everybody, yeah, everybody dry snitch. It was not one person from Atlanta was saying my name. So it's just like, y'all, the police out the rip. Fuck all y'all. Uh, so you felt justified in talking to the cops because there were so many people talking in general? Nah, I didn't feel justified. My whole thing is get them off of me. So it, it wasn't being justified. I, I didn't believe in none of the stuff, but it's just certain stuff. Like, I, I ain't no fall guy. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm not going to let nobody treat me like when I, I have own independent mindset. You, you, I'm going to treat people how they treat me. So this this way really led up to a, a certain point. Like, But you probably never in a million years thought that those the tapes would come out either, right? Right, I knew they would. Oh, you knew they would? Yeah, but I didn't think they would be, they'd make an arrest. Mm. So what I'm saying, anytime somebody talk to the police, it's, it's almost impossible that it's never going to come up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and I'm a type of person, I already be prepared or think things through. So I'm like, I'm gonna think about ten steps ahead just to be on the safe side in every which way. But and all right, so did any of your homies know? Cause I seen somewhere where I think Moontook he said that uh, Doug actually advised you to go down there and talk to the police that night because they said y'all we ain't got shit to do with nothing. Go talk to him. That's what he said on the stand. Still an open case. Yeah. Yeah. But he no, that's what he said on the YSL <laughs> trial stand like the other day. But that's what I just. He yeah. said, but I feel you on that. Yeah, but um, um, I'm not gonna speak on that because this, this, I don't recall it. Yeah, all right, I feel it. So, uh, so yeah, early days. When did you start like really going to the studio and just being around the guys? Like, what year would you say? Uh, twenty night, twenty twenty, twenty end of twenty nineteen, twenty twenty. Um, it kept me out the streets. Uh, it gave me something to do. It, was, it started being fun. So you know, that I was, was around the time you started rapping as well, right? That's when I did start. What, what made you even make that choice after just being a dude in the streets for so long? So I was in jail, and everybody knew who I would hang with. Like, man, you might wear a rap. You got a story to tell. So a dude I was locked up with, they started sending me down, trying to show me how to rap, teach me. Then you know, everybody act like on fire. They will sight me out. Then I just really went for death. Mm. Yeah, when I got out, I had made a diss track. Uh, I dissed one of them um, suckers over there, and everybody act like they liked it. So, do you they, didn't really believe them? You sound skeptical of if they really liked it. Nah, um, they liked it because we played in um, La Cora one day, and they played like three times, made me keep performing. Mm. And you know, I was going out to people. You feel me? So. They like, oh, well, you snap. Because everything I said in the song was straight facts. Mm. So, like, given that you were already, like, toying with the idea of doing the music thing, it must be kind of crazy to have such a level of fame without the music thing being the primary thing driving it. Right. So, it, a lot of people be trying to get me to do music, but, man, the, I was one of them kids growing up, they listen to the music and hear, uh, like, Lil Boosie had, like, I always bring a Boosie because, you know, Boosie was my role model. Mm. Boosie had these songs talk about what he rapped about and you can hear it in Boosie and it made me wanted to do that. So when I used to go out, well Boosie said in the song, I, I wanna try it. Yeah, you said mine and the maniac made you wanna slide. Nah, I was sliding. It's a difference. Yeah. Yeah, these niggas want to do stuff. I'm doing it. I pull up at, I pull up at the club one weekend back to back. Friday and Saturday, I had everybody out. And the police went locking me up. So they were, everybody said I did, police were locking me up. They were really going to my head, psyching me out. Then I, I was just getting careless about what I did. Yeah, because I seen that you said that uh, y'all was somewhere and you trying to make an example out of somebody on stage in front of everybody but the gun jam. God, it's real, man. People don't understand. Like, I used to hear people tell their story, and I wanted people like, yo, whatever. And they actually did it. And they did it. I, I gave it to you, and it's, they did it on you. I'm, I'm in, the security got me in the chicken wing. I'm going out the door. I'm watching you try to add a club out. And we get in the car. I'm cursing the nigga out. Man, boo. I hit the window go down. He shot the gun in the air. Yeah. So it was it was that, your anger was that mad where you wanted to make an example out of everybody in front of everybody you didn't care? Yeah. Who seen it that day? 
I, I got that attitude right now too though. Yeah. That's why I try to be peaceful. That's why I try to stay away from negativity because uh, these boys be playing. You feel me? Like, just leave me alone. I've been through too much for y'all to be out here picking at me. And if you ain't for real, I'm telling you, I won't stop. But a lot of people have the thing in their head where before they do something that is essentially them crashing out, they will think for a moment like, fuck, well, I don't want to go to jail for 20 years, so I'm going to not do this. Do you feel like you're kind of lacking that check on your behavior? Uh Nah, I'm, I get, I might get worse because like all this stuff is irritating me. You feel me? All this attention, and when when these boy, I see a lot of people trying to mention my name. Hope I respond to them. Like, I, and I be praying that they stop because I'm like, okay, I'm not running to you. You don't think you have the self control to just see somebody who's hating on you and just let it go? It depends on how I feel. Because we see you rolling up like. 10, 15 people today, it feels like you've probably got enough checks and balances to be like, nah, Woody, it's not worth it. Like, you gotta chill. There's gotta be some people in this crew who are so, able to tell you that, right? So, majority of the people you've seen, what were they? Kids, right? Well, it was a bunch of kids, too, yeah. Right, so I, I had them kids with me because it's about them. And I can't lead showing that I wanna be stupid. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So, I try to just show them where I was showed. There is more to life, you feel me? So. I discredit myself. That's why if you see I bowl every day, I go out and spend money. Like everybody be talking about me, I'm, I'm in the streets, I'm, I'm spending money. Mm. But so those kids are probably like 10 to 15, I would guess? Right. Are those people you know from the neighborhood? They're my nephews. Okay. Uh, a couple of them from the neighborhood. But they they, they, they group, you know what I mean? So. But having them around will make you stop doing some crash out shit more so than having your homies who are just looking out for your business interests and everything? Yeah, because I focus my attention on them. I try to figure out ways to make them happy, make them, you feel what I'm saying, get along, and just teach them so that when they grow up, they ain't got to make the choices that I made and other people made because mm -hmm. it's a cycle. And the only way you break that cycle is if you got to you gotta school these kids and they all look up to me. So, like I had to show them, man, um, the rules on the apply until they apply. Mm. Yeah, because it's like... In terms of the new generation of Atlanta, there's like a lot of viral memes that be going around about, you know, rappers who are like crash outs, who are kind of making that shit sound cool in their music. And you see all these kids with the whippets and the drugs are getting crazier. Like, what's your perspective on the new generation of kids out here? Like I tell them, I say uh, a few people can be my... Um, most people that make it in the industry, they made it because they was two feet in. Mm. They wasn't out here talking, doing what they talking about. They see that other people do it and they rap about it. That's how they, everybody who try to be one feet in and one feet in the streets, they going to jail. Mm. Just look at look at them and they stupid. Because, you know what I mean, the, the object is to make it out. Why would you go make it, you on main screen and you still want to do stupid stuff? So. I mean, that's what a lot of people watching the trial and shit would say about somebody like that. Say that again? That's what a lot of people watching the trial would say about somebody like Thug. Uh, really, this a vendetta with him. You know what I mean? This some personal stuff with with these people, man. This this real personal. Mm. And it, it's, it's draining. You know what I mean? For real, for real. Do you still have to go back? Like, can they still call you back on the stand or are you done with it? Them people better leave me alone. That's what they better do. Yeah, so as of right now, you, you kind of done with the trial. I, I'm done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm done. I ain't stand nothing they talking about. I already told my lawyer I'm done. They, they call me back. They gonna regret it. It feels like most of your time spent on the stand has been trying to make them regret calling you in there in the first place. Because they knew I lied. You feel me? Like, I can't speak on it, though. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they be watching everything I do. They they, they already, I just, they just took my car the other day. And I wouldn't even drive. I was on the four-wheeler. They took your car, why? I had my manager driving my car while I go drop my four-wheel off. So the police was on the side of me. He ain't bother me. But when I went through the light, he noticed that the car behind me. He pulled the car over, snatched her out the car, took her phone, locked her up for reckless driving and impounded the car. And said, was that Copeland? Nigga, you got a problem with me. Nigga, you should have pulled up on the side of me. As, and you saw my face. I ain't had no helmet on. Why do you think the target at her? I'm, I'm, because it's me. And I told her she got a lawsuit. Because you write them on camera. We don't know side drive. It's cameras at every light right here. 
You got proof that you went reckless driving. That false imprisonment, girl, you better go get rich. Mm. I keep telling people, y'all need to learn the law, man. Because these people do stuff to that every day. And if we if we don't push the issue, they're going to continue to do it. The lawsuit hustle is a real thing. A lot of people out there getting rich off that shit. And, 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 but it's a lot of people that could have, have a better life if they had somebody to tell them, like, like now, I knew police walk up and be like, him, snatch my hood, shirt up, yeah. take pictures of my tattoo. That's a lawsuit. But I didn't know that at the time. Mm. So I be trying to tell my nephew now, look, man, if you walking down the street, the police pull up on you and, and say something, you just keep walking. They can't they can't bother you. They only can if if uh if you stop engaging in conversation with them. Mm. If they if they not investigating the crime. They can't pull you over? What crime did you commit? I don't know. I just feel like if I told the cops, like, hell no, I'm not stopping to talk to you, that it probably wouldn't go that good. They could pull you over in a car. Why can't they pull you over walking down the street? Because you ain't doing nothing. Like, if you ain't broke no law, they can't mess with you. Yeah, they're going to have to be able to claim, like, some kind of probable cause, I guess, right? Same way when they pull you over, they can't just pull you over for no reason. Exactly. But they do it because they know that people don't know the law or people don't want to push the issue. Right. Can I just ask this? Was there anybody who influenced you or gave you any kind of advice about how to act on the stand? Because I feel like all these years of like observing trials and shit that we never seen anybody take the the route that you did. I didn't communicate with nobody just for that purpose. Um, I didn't I didn't open up and talk to nobody until after I had got out of jail from pleading the fifth. Nobody never coached me or talked to me about it because I don't even want to hear nothing about it. Um, that whole situation, like, I didn't have that plan, you feel me, this is, this is how I feel. Um, can't say much about it, but, um, uh, wrong is wrong, you feel me? I'm just trying to correct my wrong, I mean, my wrongs with right, you feel what I'm saying? I, what I did was wrong, and, you know, I just asked God for forgiveness for what I did, mm. so. Can you talk about, uh, what actually happened in the ex parte meeting that y'all had? Um. Uh, Cause they, cause yeah, Brian still said that they they took you out to court, Judge Glenville, Miss Love, and somebody else, and y'all had an ex parte meeting that wasn't supposed to be had, and they were trying to like uh, influence you to say sh certain shit. I don't know what that was. I just know the whole treatment was, it was different. It was scary, because it's like damn, I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm in I'm thinking I'm in jail. I'm thinking that I'm in I'm in good hands. Yeah. But what I saw was something different. You feel me? It wasn't. It wasn't thinking I was in good hands. Thinking I'm in. Oh man, something about to happen to me, and I'm in the police custody. So you can't talk about what was said during the meeting. I don't think I can right now because um, it's an ongoing matter. Yeah. But a lot of things that was discussed it that it's crazy. You see, my attorney even scared to speak up on what was said. Yeah. So I know I'd be a fool if I open my mind. Yeah. All right, can you say this? What's your opinion on Judge Glenville? You feel like he's uh, crooked? I'm not going to call him a crooked, but I I think things got personal with him. And That's what I meant by crooked. I was like, intimidated by him. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Um, because I seen that. I didn't think there's a role a judge should play. I never seen a judge be so involved in a situation as much as he was trying to be. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they would do things like make you like just come down to the station or come to the interrogation room where you'd be locked up and shit. Like they were applying a lot of pressure. Um man, it's it's so much stuff that was going on because you gotta understand trust. So it, it it's like what you call it self uh, preservation. Mm -hmm. Shit, you know what I mean? Because those people were doing stuff. You like how how y'all able to do this? Yeah. You just explain to your lawyer like hey, this what's going on. It's just like man, I don't know how. It's, you you got no win with them. It's their game. It's, it's their rules and all of that. Yeah, yeah. So is there part of you that wants to leave Atlanta and get out of this whole rat race? Yeah, now it is. And the only reason it's like that because it's like I'm, I'm watching stuff. Um, people are more jealous of who I am 
Mm. Then the whole situation. They just mad as me. Uh, and they know that I would hurt somebody in real life. Mm. I think that um, I'd be provoked to somebody that, that really don't want to do that to me, but they want to try to trick me out the street. And I had went to uh, Fort Lauderdale about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I was kicking out there with some uh, kids called Logan, white boy. And I seen how they were living. They showed me that. I was like, man, you know, I got to live like them. <laughs> you feel me? So Just being ducked off away from everything. But does that appeal to you? Because I feel like you could already be in the crib not really having to be out and about being a man of the people, but instead you'd rather be bopping around Atlanta, hitting all these different spots and moving around with your team. I had to distract myself. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Because there's so much pressure on me. And I, it's my country, you feel me? Like, because people don't understand. Y'all saying I told. So why it took police 10 years? But I ain't into explaining myself. I just let the do say what they want to say. Some shit you feel like you are, because a lot of people say that you... This is the thing they say on the internet. They say either Woody slow or Woody a genius. And that's what they be saying. They saying that you spinning them and shit. However the case is, either whatever you said. You feel like some shit you said in interrogation, you probably said a little too much. No interrogation rules. I'm Do free. you regret saying any of that? I'm free. Yeah. And I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And another thing is like, because a lot of people would be looking at like, damn, like. How you still moving around Atlanta safe? Like you don't you don't fear for your life or anything? Uh, hey man, we living to die. Whoever want to be stupid and come crash out on me, that's on them. You feel me? They just better succeed because they got family and they got people that they care about. If I can't get them, because that's for sure a conversation I've heard a lot of people having while we've been out here is like, how is Woody really moving around like this? I respect Why? everybody. See, like I said, like how Atlanta is, right? I don't walk around just saying, oh, FD niggas or FD niggas. Yeah. I respect y'all. I respect y'all. Even if somebody mugging me, I just look at them, watch me, and go about my business. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I say, um, I grew up in a lot of hoods. And a lot of people from other hoods know how I get down, just like I know how they get down. And that's just it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I ain't look for problems. That's why every time I get on an interview, I say, hey, don't bother me. You feel me? I, you know, I know some people laying in the cut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody praying on something happening. Just, I ask God to remove all, even from my path, and look what happened. Niggas just dropping dead. That's not a diss to every chum. I'm just saying. They just, you know what I mean? That's all I do. I pray and I have faith in God. But I, I assume there's a lot of people that you would probably enjoy shitting on publicly, but we don't really hear you do it. Because they're irrelevant. They haven't lived. They haven't walked that path I have. Mm-hmm. So it's like I know I know how real things can get, and if if I got a problem with you, I'm not gonna shine no attention on it. Yeah, that is kind of the crazy thing about a lot of the drill rapper type personas is that they basically end up glorifying their ops and turning their ops into celebrities. Cause they letting clout crash them out. Mm-hmm. I'm watching people that they just like, you was good with me. I don't care. But now you want that clout. Now you better watch over your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't, I ain't living like that no more. You feel me? Like, I don't carry no guns, no nothing. I, I, I really believe in God to the, to the extent where I just, because I know the police waiting. Everybody say I'm snitching. I've been working with the police for 10 years. They so stupid. Look how much time I spent in jail. Why would the police have their informant in jail? Y'all got to understand. You see, people don't, people don't, they just see stuff and just take it and run with it. Yeah. You know they, I mean? they they were saying that you that the police letting you do anything out here so they can get the that's that's what they be saying on the so internet. So I had spent so many years in jail. Yeah. You feel me? So it don't make sense. Like police thought it was smart. I thought I was smart. When did they grant you full immunity? Like when did that? When did you start hearing about that? Man, I, I don't. I, what what y'all give me feel? I don't want immunity because I one thing I ain't gonna do. I ain't gonna self incriminate myself. Yeah. I don't care. But what you, you we done heard you say a lot of crazy shit though. All right, you said all right on the stand. I heard you said. That you got mad at Thug and you almost killed him. Uh, I didn't almost kill him. Uh, or you wanted to kill him. I wanted to kill Satan Nash too. Tell him. <laughs> Why? He on the internet talking. Yeah. 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 That's the only YouTuber you ever felt like that about? Um, he the one who, who made, it's somebody on TikTok now, you know what I mean? But I ain't gonna shine no attention on him. You know what I mean, like people just be talking, be, be, like you said, yeah. want a response. Yeah. 
But you ain't gonna get the right response you want out of me, cause I'm telling you, you come to Atlanta and you get caught lacking. Like, I ain't the ones who be just talking on the internet. Yeah. I'm gonna walk right up on you. But what happened with you and your thug where you even felt like you wanted to kill a nigga? Like, where y'all fell out at? He wasn't like doing features for you and shit, or? <laughs> nah, I wasn't. Nah, thug was always a great person. Like, yeah. so that's why you ever see me, like, I get. Uh, because I was going through a lot. I had a lot of wrong people in my ears. You feel me? Like, and I just felt like me and her had a certain bond where I thought that it, it was both ways. You feel what I'm saying? But I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't think about what he may have been going through. I was only thinking about myself. So with people in my ears poisoning my mind, you feel me? It was hard, especially with going to war. I had to go to war with so many, so many times by myself. It was just like... It get tired, you feel me? Like, man, you ever get tired of Oh. <laughs> you ever get, I know y'all, because y'all ain't even like that. Yeah. I don't know how y'all live, yeah. but I know you freaky. Yeah, yeah. So you just get tired of just going to war. <laughs> yeah, nah, I feel it. Freaky is fair. Just don't say zesty. <laughs> I don't know if you guys said that out here yet, but. Freaky's better be than saying, Zesty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the same, ain't it? So it was more so like a uh, thing you felt like he could have just been doing more for you? Like what, what kind of poison was getting in your ear? Um, It wasn't about doing more. I was doing for myself. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But, you know. Um, what you wanted from him, in a sense? Or what was you getting in return that you felt like, damn? Uh, be a man of your word. It's a conversation that we had, you feel me? And he used to always say this certain thing. And I was just like, okay, when the time presented, show it. Yeah. And when the time presented, it was like, I was like, dang, you feel me? So now it's just like that mind, the survival mind kicked in. Yeah. You got you to gotta protect yourself. You got to, you got to, you got to do what you got to do. Because it's like, I don't put so much into a certain, you know, I put so much into this where it's like, um, you feel me? Where yo, yeah. But all right, what was the word? What did what uh what did he didn't do for you? Cause you say he told you he's gonna do something. And he just said fuck it, he ain't do it. But what nah, was he it? didn't say if he ain't do it. It was just like it ain't about what. He, it just be like if oh oh, got them got cramps. The damn four wheeler. Yeah. Like for instance, right? Me, me and you. Hold up, that, that thing trying to come up in my leg. <laughs> I thought you were finna pull Blick out. <laughs> I was like, what's going on now? I'm, I'm a different person now, man. Nah, I was just talking <laughs> shit. Nah, cramps are the worst, though. Yeah, yeah they did, especially with them trying to come in, too. But people can't probably tell, but these chairs are high up, so your legs are kind of sitting in like a weird position, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't even touch the ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so for instance, right? If me and you rocking, yeah. if you fall short, you, I, I gotta be there to help you lift up. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so you feel like it's a couple of times he left you hanging? Um, or is it a financial hanging? Like financially? <clears throat> it just in a time of need. So um, if anyone of my friend go to jail, I'm gonna make sure that they have lawyer paid and all of that. Mm. So it won't have to be none of that. Um, when they when they lock my manager up, I called to the bond company, can I pay y'all extra money to get her out? I'm on it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I, I didn't, I ain't I know he's a busy person, you feel what I'm saying? But they just led up to me allowing these poisons to get in my ear. Yeah. And affect, you know what I mean? What I mean her head going on. But uh, I was, when when do you feel like what year y'all started falling out or? We. Because it wasn't the thing where he like, he started falling back from you because the niggas were saying, oh, what he telling? Let me fall back. So or, so when people say you need to tell him, right? And yeah. you know you know what's going on. Yeah. You ain't stand with nobody talking about it. Cause you know what's going on. Yeah. So, um, I don't know what point it got up to or whatever the case was because I got mad. You feel what I'm saying? Cause he's like, I told you, you get tired of doing certain stuff. Yeah. And it's like, man, it's still an open case, so I can't really just say it like how I want it. Cause I like to be blunt. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But I, I know that y'all be on the police type of time. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, well, I the, the fans I, I, will I, interpret it as they as I, they want to. Yeah, exactly. It so. don't really even matter what we think. They're the judge. And the I jury. ain't mess with them people. <laughs> the fans? Oh, I thought you said feds. No, no. Them yeah, too. I ain't. I ain't I mean, yeah, I'm. I'm just trying to stay free. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um. So, how do you feel like, or how do you feel about Gunna 
in general, and, and how do you feel about the reaction that he's gotten since he's been back out? It feels like people have mostly, maybe maybe Atlanta and maybe the people around you are a little bit different, but it feels like with the fans and shit, they've largely just accepted him back. I, I admire Gunner because he didn't let this stuff destroy him. He didn't let it break him. He kept pushing forward. And, you know what I mean? He had to show he had to show people that he him. Uh, everybody's so quick to criticize him and try to say that. But can't nobody, in this case, can't nobody come show no statement that Gunner made at any point. Can't nobody show that he sat down with the police at any time. Okay, that plea agreement or whatever, you know what I mean? Everybody who don't have a co-defendant don't plead guilty to it. Uh, nothing Gunner did is used in his trial. Yeah. Um, they not gonna say that, oh well, gonna play guilty saying why it's hell again. They never gonna play none of that. Um I don't know where him and bro had going on. I don't get in other people's business. But I feel as in this they whole thing. The the state is if we can't convict them, we can destroy them. Mm -hmm. That's why they trying to expose everybody. When they lock other people up, you don't see them leaking out interrogation footage of, of them. You don't see them putting out discovery. Anytime any gangs get locked up, they what they do to the gang members? They show everybody statements against each other, but they kept they keep other people's stuff under wraps. Like even if we're not gonna be able to lock you up, we're gonna basically disrupt this organization one way or another. Yeah, and they and they and they think it's destroyed why it's here, and I'm 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 a hundred percent against that because it's just like uh, people came for nothing. Like you feel what I'm saying? Like um, y'all gave certain people leverage. Yeah. When they have, they they been in the worst of situation than, than Thug. Mm. Thug ain't Thug ain't Thug ain't got no violence. He yeah. didn't. He had no record before this. Right, and he didn't. He didn't. He not actually locked up for pushing the dead body out the car or, or doing nothing, nothing yeah. to nobody. You feel what I'm saying? But y'all want to send him to prison 20, 40 years, but y'all let other people go. So why is other people getting favoritism? But it's no favoritism right here. Mm. And that's, that's just something that just weird to me. Because they want him to be the top of the pyramid. They want to. They want everybody to tell on him, so that there's nobody left for him to tell on. Um, man, I don't know, man. But I just pray that God continue to protect him. I um, mean, because at this point, it's crazy. You feel me? Like I can understand it. But that's why I was so surprised. I wasn't on the case. Mm. You know what I mean? Because so many people mention my name, bring my name up. Y'all let all the violent people out. Well, a lot of people say that you're not on the cases because you was like the number one star witness and use it to help build it. But I'm slow. Yeah. You got to understand, if I build a case, ain't no trial. I'm with it. You feel me? Ain't no trial. Everybody be trying to take the best deal they can get. Yeah. But the line and just trying to, you know, maneuver it. You know I mean, like I said, you get to a certain point, you got to have an ace in your back pocket. You know what I mean? Just the facts are the facts, and and the, what the facts ain't is not. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff to this case. All right, one more thing that I seen too was uh, <laughs> you was dating a police officer, and she lost her job and all this behind it. You said you seen that. Yeah, that's so, that's true, right? Um, I knew this girl that. I guess that was her job. Yeah. How did you meet her? Um, I met her through another friend. Yeah. Yeah. Is police pussy hit different? Crazy. <laughs> this is you got to be thinking the whole time. Like I've, I've been living my life in fear of people. Who I look actually like never this. seen her. I seen her with her, her clothes on, one, her uniform once. Mm. I woke up on my sheet like, what the hell? <laughs> She's like a whole other person. That's how you found. She told you in advance. No, I didn't. I didn't find out like that. I knew. All right, so but you, you know. I, like I said, I had respect for her, you know, her job and all of that. So I didn't interfere with it. So yeah. when, when every time I came around, she had already had her regular clothes and stuff like that. Um, I'd be trying to hit while she was wearing the police officer uniform. No? Yeah. You see, you're not freaky enough. No, it, it's not. It's not that. It just, like I told you, when she had it on, I, I woke up. I was like, what the hell? It scared me for real. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you think something until you get it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's, it's a little it, too real. Huh? It was a little too real. Brought back some bad memories. Mm. Now he's just like. Um, I had a couple of police officers. <laughs> he had a couple <laughs> of other ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! What 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 is your girl situation since you've been out though? 
just there's probably a lot of opportunities. Man, there's so many girls out to me, man. And it's scary, though, because these girls are crazy as hell. Mm. I don't want no girl that attracted to me because you got to be crazy. You ain't crack any from the 20v1s? No. What? Because you, you been running it up. There's some talent in there. <laughs> yeah, but I just think they're like... I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I, I want a girl. I want a, a girl that I can say this man. Not none I just made on, the, on 20 verse 1. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So if she's on 20 verse 1, she already used up? Clear. Now, I ain't going to say she used up, but it's just like you do that... Like, it, it's a different if, if a female just can't, I can't on here only just to try to be in the facility with you. Mm. Well, I can not mean, but it's just like these girls coming up here, it could be anybody up there. And then most of them, they coming for their check. Mm. So they get paid to come do that. Mm. But when I've been doing it, these girls, they, they be in their feelings. So that's why I don't really be wanting to do it no more because I don't be wanting to hurt their feelings. Wait, you think that they're really trying to find love with you? Yeah. Wow. The last one I went, like eight girls tried to leave with me. Yeah. I said, y'all must, they don't tell y'all how I roll. I get them back in, I'm out the door. But you're just not trying to fuck eight random girls that you met in a white room? My life ain't, my life ain't right for me to be, be in a relationship right now. So, and I ain't trying to play with nobody or play on no females and nothing like that. I would think that the relationship would be the only thing that would be making you not fuck the random girls from the 20 verse 1. Say it again? Like... I would for sure be fucking all the girls from the 20 versus 1, unless I'm in a relationship, and then maybe I could, like, have the stoicism to say no to them. That's why I call you freaky. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like most men here would agree. Man, you let a man hit your wife, man. I know. How you feel about that? That's the white people activities. Yeah. White people be doing you that, let, You letting me hit your girl? No, I ain't doing it. Puffy was hiring male porn stars to fuck his girl. Who? Puffy. Trying to pee did? Yeah. Look who you're talking about. I know. So it's not a good example, but I'm just saying there are black people who do this. I don't even think he's black at this point. Oh, come on. That's black excellence right there. Who? Diddy? I'm saying he I love Diddy. Now, I mean I don't I don't believe everything I see on the internet. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, like, I ain't letting nobody hit my girl. My girl can't even Man, I wish you would entertain somebody. He can have you. I ain't. Believe it or not, though, that's the strength of our relationship that we felt comfortable doing that. But how you sleep at night knowing, like, she had the black thing up in her? Fine. I don't even think about it. And you kiss her and everything? Yeah, of course. Man, you crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy. So what, you, you're willing to make all these bags doing the 20 versus ones. Is there another bag that would be bigger that would get you in the porn game? Man, they they been going crazy because they see me on their fan bus. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah, on yeah, the bus. Yeah. Man, now these girls like, man, forget the 20 verse 1, they going to make an OnlyFans. See? Like, That's man. a possibility for you? Man, I be scared, <laughs> man. These girls be catch feeling too quick, man. On a porn set? <laughs> That's like the number one place where I don't think they're going to catch feelings. You know, they, cause they, you add them. Right, but I mean, all the girls who do porn, they know what it is. You think you get stage fright? Who? You. Man, no. I've seen better men than you not be able to perform on camera. Like, people who do this for a living. See, the why I call you freaky. He already stunned. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's a lot A lot of guys can't do it in a room full of people. I wouldn't be doing it in a room full of people either. Well, there's got to be like a couple of cameramen and shit. They camera woman. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good idea. Um, Why don't you like uh, WAC 100? I don't, I don't dislike them. I just don't like for people to speak on me. Y'all don't know me. They call me a killer. But can't nobody name two people I killed. When I mean, one person I killed. I mean, when you talk to people behind <laughs> the scenes, that that's like a big part of the conversation is like, let's let's talk about who we think Woody did it to. But see, what is in L.A.? He need to mind L.A. business. You feel me? I never seen Wack a day in my life. You know, Brick, baby, you know, everybody heard of him. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Then he has... They used, my grandma's house was right across the street from him. Mm. I mean, and so I don't mind him speaking on the land of being him because he here, he here with us. Mm. Man, only thing I hear about what is he laying in the bed, I think butt naked or something. Yeah, but you don't get out the shower and, and lay down on your bed naked before you get dressed? Why you on Kim? It was a girl that he was fucking with who took that photo. And yeah, she snuck a film. He freaking like you. And, no, not like me. And then she I'm going to tell you about shit. 
Uh, probably seven or eight times. But uh, no, but then <laughs> hey, he likes seeing that. That same you. girl lied and said that she put three fingers in his ass. How you know she lied? You tried. It. My OG would never. Your OG would never. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my guy. Now I don't got nothing against Wet though. You know what I mean? I just don't like. I just don't like no. Cause I don't know Wet for me to be speaking bad on him. or just speaking on him. Period. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know nothing going on with with YSL. But if you became like a lifelong podcaster, at some point you're gonna end up in a situation where you have to talk about other people's legal drama and, and other shit that they got going that's on. Which is, that's kind of the position Wax in. Is like he he talks about LA shit all the time. But if there's a big trial going on in Atlanta, he's probably going to end up talking about that, too. Right. So, but that's why I won't be no podcast. Mm. Because, you know what I mean? I ain't trying to be getting it in other people's business. That's why the 20 verse 1 thing is so crazy. Because it creates an environment for somebody like you to make content. People go crazy for it. But it doesn't have to be about your street shit or whatever drama you've had in the past. Because I like I, I really have issue with even coming on here speaking. Because why is y'all putting street shit on these type of platforms? And then, what you say, I don't watch it. Two, three people don't live and got locked up for murder and stuff. Like, it shows how ignorant we are when we get on here and just go to talk about things that we should just kept where it was. But I've interviewed a lot of people who got picked up for murder at some point afterwards, but it's almost never like they said anything in the interview that... Really I, ain't, I ain't blaming on... I ain't say that... If, if, I, if I choose to sit right here and say some incriminating stuff, that's my fault. I ain't saying that... Because, like I said, you ain't got to ain't got to answer whatever questions you ask. So I ain't blaming y'all, but I'm just saying that how dudes say that they screw and they get on these platforms and go to dry snitches. That's my whole issue with this whole situation. Mm-hmm. Everybody dry snitch on me. I can read the comments right now. They're gonna say how would he saying that shit, but then you went in the inter- interrogation video and said all the shit you said. I'm free. Yeah, but well, what's the difference though? I'm free. That's the difference. My my plan worked. Mm. What is y'all talking about? Yeah. Y'all gotta be slower than me. I'm on the street. Yeah. And I ain't bragging like 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 I'm happy that people in jail or anything. But I'm slow though. What's your thoughts on YSL Mondo? Cause he had a whole bunch of say. Who? YSL Mondo. Who is it? So you you ain't you ain't seen him around? You seen what he said recently who, though. Who is YSL Mondo? I can't. Well he was claiming to be around from when YSL was founded. He was around back in the day. Uh, well, I I'm from Canada. Yeah. Um so So you ain't never seen him in the studio or anything? I don't think I ever seen him a day in my life. Yeah. Um. So for him to be trying to speak on me, if he is, he just joined the line. Yeah. You know what I mean. What was your relationship with people like uh, Ola Player and like Bloody J back in the day? Uh, I don't really know Ola Player. I heard of him. Um, I probably been around him a few times. Uh, and what you say? And then Bloody J, because he's somebody I seen thug around like early on. There was like a vlog with him, Rocco, Ola, like they were all in the hood. So you know, Bloody J was out there in the midst. Um, he was out in the streets and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, he was nobody you was kicking it with back in the day? I'm saying, you know, how Atlanta is made. You know, we not, we all eight people. You feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. I say, shit, you respect us, we respect you. They, back then, before all this other stuff started happening, this is how this how we all rocked it. So that's why it was okay for us to go in other people's neighborhoods and kick with other people and do this and do that. Yeah. Because it, sure, it's, it's just the respect you give. And Bloody J, he was hot. He was blood. I don't know if he still is or whatever, but everybody rocking this. So if you blood, won't we'll care where you from, what hood you is, that's how he was until they started to divide it. You feel me? Yeah. And pa- pause for a second. We another twenty five to make it a full hour and a half. I thought it was supposed to be an hour. Oh, I thought it was supposed to be two hours. I thought it was two hours. I got I got some more questions though. Some good shit. Man. So what you just say? Well, he was trying to say we gotta wrap it up, but I thought we were doing a full two hours. But so I mean, what you trying to do now? Anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours is cool. How much you trying to pay? Well, what we already paid. That's an hour. So what you just asked for? Twenty more minutes. All right, they do it. Cool. All right, well, listen, stay away from those questions y'all trying to go around. And um, we're not doing the mechanics of shit because that's extra fun to go. For y'all to follow him in the hood, that's too that's too personal. Going to mechanics? I mean, I don't care where we vlog. We were I'm just supposed to go out it, and do some shit. Y'all only paying for this. No, no we, this the deal was this. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, nope. I've got to tell you. You that. talk all that? I okay. want to yeah, take yeah. them to mechanics. Okay. okay. That's but, on me. That's okay. good. I know I ain't tell you my bad. That's, right, that's right. on me. Okay. There's something on me. I've got to tell you. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Cool. All right, cool. love, love. But you gotta have access to that um footage when it go to the mechanics bill. You gotta have access to that footage.
Oh yeah, we'll we'll send you a draft to make sure you're cool with it. Yeah, we don't want to show any. Man, I don't, yeah, if you realize, I don't give a fuck about none of that. <laughs> well, yeah, no, yeah but now you're right, though. My bad. I first told you that. Yeah. They, they, my fault. they could turn that into a... I'm saying this, 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 this is the truth. They could turn that into a whole documentary on you. That yeah. could be that could be a whole... This interview could be one project, and them going to Mechanicsville and all that other shit, that could be fucking 100,000. That's that's a whole nother situation. I'm explaining. I'm explaining. I'm going to go that in. That's cool. Yeah. You're right. I'm going to explain to you my mindset. Okay, cool. You feel what I'm saying? I just wanted to put that out there. Right. Yeah. Like I said, uh, I'm going to explain to you when you... You got it. Yeah, gotcha. Did you ever feel worried when Thug would put your name in certain songs? Or was that always just like you were hyped on it? Did I feel worried? Uh, only one time I was just like, what the hell? In halftime? I can't remember what, what song it was. You said something about what, Woody going to pop at your noggin? What about it? Did that... Were you at all, or were you just complimented? It wasn't true, so I didn't. Mm. I didn't really think much on it. Definitely. Like you said earlier, you're like, don't put Thug's name in anything, Rainbow. But do you feel like he kind of like pushed it up to the limit of like trying to like almost tempt people into doing that with like the dress shit and everything? I don't know because if a person gonna do it, they, they already had it in their mind anyway. Mm. You feel me? So he was smart. But I just, me saying that was basically off um, people that knows him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I heard him say out his mouth that he was real offended about somebody who knew him called him gay. So it was just like, it offended him to a whole nother level. And and I just didn't know that's something that he, didn't, he don't like. Yeah, like your friends saying it is so different than the comment section saying it. Right, because it's, it's, like, it's like everybody, like for instance, you know, oh, who the snitching, who the snitching? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know me. So, so it don't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. But if somebody you know say it, you, you gonna feel away. If somebody who I know said just like okay, my 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 earnest good, I be like. So what was your thoughts on when you seen Thug wear the dress and shit? I never seen her wear. That's the craziest thing to me. Yeah. I never seen her wear no weird, nothing that he posted on social media. Mm -hmm. And we could be together. I still didn't see when he had it on. You ain't seen it on the album cover. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I think I was in jail. You had to see the album cover, at least. By yeah, now. I was in jail when he saw But I'm saying in person, like yeah, when we yeah, was yeah, together, yeah. I'd never seen him dressing like that. Not one single time. But even if you ain't seen him in person, you ain't ever just like, nigga, what you, what you doing with this? Like he, Or he told you it was a marketing play? When you, like, when you, you go around that? the... That ain't even, it don't matter what he do that's in that nature, you're going to know, like, yeah, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't. Because he, his whole, his whole demeanor is just let you know, like... yeah. He's smart and creative, that's all. I mean, be real, like, when you're just hanging out around the house, you're just going to be wearing fucking sweatpants and jeans and regular shit, and then if you go do, like, a crazy photo shoot for an album cover or whatever, that's when you're going to put on, like, a, a tux or a weird outfit. It's like, that's when the stylist is bringing you clothes, and I feel like for Thug, it's like, that, that was probably where that came from. But you want to know what? I interviewed him in 2019, and he hadn't done an interview for mad years before that, and he said in the interview, when I brought up the dress thing, he was like, I had to. I had to hide the stick. And I remember just being like, what the fuck? Like, that sounds so crazy. And then he puts out the album, and that's one of the lyrics on the album. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's crazy. He, like, previewed the lyrics from the album during the interview. I was hyped. That was a fan. I, I still didn't hyped. understand what he mean by that. I mean, yeah, it still kind of don't make any sense, right? I used to ask dress. him sometimes, like, what did you say? You know what I mean? It sounds cool in a song, but it, it's like... But then, you know what? You do see that in Chicago, there's like been some killers who would like would pull up in women's clothes shit. so that they could get their guy. And get away with it. That's some advantage. You damn better shit. be smart about it. Yeah. Not <laughs> I me. Mean. Did you ever hear the rumors? Because like recently there was rumors that they said Nut was dating Fonnie Willis or had a relationship with her. Did you ever see those rumors or do you know anything about that? Oh, I seen the rumors of it. I don't know what Nut was doing with his personal life. Yeah. Um, like I said, our rumors ain't. It's rumor. Yeah. So. But something going on. Yeah. So you, it, it's a, it could be a possibility? Oh, I don't know. You know, none of everybody know everybody. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with this situation. What was your relationship with Nut before things went where it went? Like, did you know him personally? Yeah. I knew him. Um, yeah, I knew him. Yeah. Y'all wasn't, like, friends or anything? <coughs> he was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he was cool. Because they say a lot of the drama shit happening is because you got jumped at Club Crucial, and that's when a whole bunch of shit just... Somebody put your hands, their hands on you, what you'll do? I feel it. You just Whatever said you weren't like that early, though. Which one is it? 
I'm just saying I feel where you coming from as a street right. nigga. Somebody put their hands on you, like. So if somebody put their hands on you, you not you not claiming to be a street nigga, right? He's yeah. gonna call me. And what you gonna <laughs> do? Get freaky? Nah. Yeah, <laughs> I got multiple I'm sides to my myself. personality. I'm a, Come I'm on. a man first, so I ain't finna yeah. let you just do anything to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna defend myself. Right. Yeah. And, and, and this coming from a civilian, right? Yeah. But they say it's because you stole Nuts' chain and shit. I'm some... still. Yeah, so yeah, because there's rumors they're saying that you broke broke in a Nut car, or stole some money and chains and shit. But the door was unlocked. So it wasn't really no break in, it was just. I'm, I'm, I'm just. You asked me a question, I'm answering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now, nah, um. No, I have respect for Nut. I mean, like. It, if an opportunity presents itself, anybody gonna take it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did you know it was Nuts Jewelry? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I feel it. Because uh, it's another thing, because, like, uh, Nut Brother Shell Kel, his name gets mentioned all the time in the YSL trail. He did a song recently where he had, like, put your, like, interrogation shit at the beginning of that shit. So is he a big part of, like, the beef and shit? You know, anytime you put uh, interrogation, are you speaking on me, or you just putting me, you putting more attention on me. They Everybody chasing clout, you feel what I'm saying, and making yeah. people want to figure out who I am at, who am I. If I'm this snitch, why y'all so focused on me? If I'm this, whatever y'all want me to be, clearly I'm, I'm more than what y'all trying to make it seem like it is. Because y'all, everybody want to put me in videos and get attention, but like I want, that same boy who made that song, you know what I did to him? I made some girls beat him up in real life. Like these boys be playing, they know not to play with me. In real life, me females beat them up. Shell kill. Not that boy. That's uh, my your video. Uh, how you many girls is it? That boy been popped. I ain't got a hole in me. So if you been hit up, go get some smoke, bro. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, man. So y'all be mentioning people like, hey, man, the boy got bullet holes in him. Don't forget that. Well, a lot of real ones got bullet holes in them. They'll make them real because they got bullet holes in them? No, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. They're real and they have been shot. Yeah, fool. You know what I mean? But you can't respect somebody who's been shot? I don't, I don't disrespect them. I'm just saying, bro, you've been popped. You've been hit up. So all that talking you doing, you for the bench stop that. Do something. You've been shot. So you think if you got shot, you would move around differently and have a different level of humility? Bro, I've been shot at, I've been shot at a lot. I move how I move. You think I'm lacking. Why do you think they missed every time? Because it's good. Yeah, because you had the, the one situation where you had your baby in your hand and you shot back at them. You yeah, And where, where, where was I on my way to? The hospital, right? Yeah, you yeah. was on your... Hmm. Think I'm lacking if you want. Who take a... I wasn't taking no gun to no hospital, but I'm just saying. Yeah. But the dude who shot at you, you had, he had been over your house two weeks before? Nah, this kept. Um, oh, that's not true? Yeah, yeah, this kept. That boy ain't had nothing to do with me getting <clears throat> shot at. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's part of the lies I was telling uh. So I try to mislead the police. So if, if Elder did something to me, and I know Adam did it, yeah. I'm gonna put it off on him. So 12, we look for him. Why well, I go get my get back on Adam. You feel what I'm saying? But the police played a dirty game. All they was, they, they feel like they could tie me to much bigger stuff. So what they do is try to leak this out. Yeah. So that now it could turn people against me. So now I can just bow down to them. I don't care how nobody think of you or me. I live the real life. I don't live the fake life. I'm not pretending. So this how they played out. Mm. Um, okay. What what was it actually like, uh, Lincoln with Charleston White? You guys seem like you you hit it off perfectly. Uh, I had a lot of respect for him. Um, I just watched the interviews, you know, on YouTube and stuff. Listen the way he talked. But it seems now he's like he doing these interviews and I don't like him. You feel me? Like he get on the internet, somebody I'm a killer. And all it is, like, they ain't, bro. Like, man, you don't talk about none of this stuff you're going to do on these platforms. Oh. Like, like, my respect for you, I'm losing it because it's like, dang, I got real genuine love for you. I thought that you had the same thing for me. But you want to get on these platforms and say, I'm a killer. And I walk around Atlanta, like, you trying to provoke it. Like, even with the boosie. Boosie don't respond back to who's like, I ain't trying to have problems. I ain't out here trying to mess with nobody. I ain't trying to have beef with nobody. I don't did that for, like, too many years of my life. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm trying to move forward with it. And I ain't trying to be dragged into nothing because I know how I can get. And you playing. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, and I and like I said, I didn't expect you to to be doing this. You feel me? Because 
the respect I had, I put you so high up in my, you know what I'm saying? I don't respect people that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he, he kind of hurt my feeling with, with, with doing these interviews, speaking on my situation. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't proud of this stuff. I ain't proud of none of this stuff I went through. So if you were sitting down with Boosie on a podcast, what would you want to ask him? You said Boosie? Yeah. What you mean? Like, what would be the most interesting thing for you to ask him about what he said about you and what he puts out there about you? You said Boosie or Charleston White? Charleston White. Oh, yeah. I was talking about Boosie because you just brought him up, but I guess Charleston, too. Um. Well, Charleston White was the one who said all stuff where you lost respect. Right, but you saying right? that he, he lost respect for Boosie for talking about him. Nah, I didn't. Like, nah, because at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Who don't expect Boosie to react? You feel what I'm saying? I don't yeah. care how Boosie look at me, Charleston White look at me, or none of them. You feel what I'm saying? I only care about the respect I have for people. You feel what I'm saying? So I didn't lose respect for Boosie because he said something. I would have said something. Yeah. If, if, if you provoking me to. But I don't, want, I don't like that Charles White are putting me in a certain light. And I didn't expect him to, to do that to me because of all that I've been through. How, do you, uh, how did you make that? Uh, There's a list there, like the top 10 most dangerous people in Georgia. You don't feel my energy? Yeah. That's how I made it. So when you seen that shit, like it made a lot of people just feel how this this preconceived. It surprised me that when I seen it, um, but it ain't really like, it ain't how they try to make it be. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not a top violent defender because if I was, I'd be up under the jail. Mm-hmm. They just another way to try to, they just try to paint a bad in, image of me out there. What's your relationship like with Dolly White nowadays? Cause I know y'all used to be real cool, close. Uh, I don't, I don't speak to nobody, because the simple fact is, I just don't care to kick it. Um, I don't have nothing against nobody, not even share care. So if anybody got smoke with me or mad with me, they can shoot me in the head or they can leave me alone. Mm-hmm. You did say that you feel like the police purposely put out the interrogation videos and shit. Indeed, so they did. Yeah, um, it don't take a rocket science. I told you people think I'm stupid. And for they lost part, I'll tell you, you play a fool to catch one. What was the moment when you seen that viral video of you when you checked your post and niggas was, because that's the day when it really went viral. There's like, that nigga went crazy in the interrogation room. So why is it a trial? Why that interview never been played in the trial? So oh. you got to understand, um, if, you, if you watch me in the trial, you see this is my personality. You think I didn't know they recorded me in there? Look at the stuff. If I'm saying somebody for to die, right, and I'm going to jail, yeah. why did nobody, why did the club didn't get shot up? Because I was making it all up. So that's why they try to put it out there and expose me. I didn't care. Yeah. It's a different when you, you somebody just around seeing what's going on. You somebody that getting active. How, how, how long you uh, did in prison? Like, how many years of your life you feel like you spent, uh, spent in prison anyway? So from all together from 2012, I got locked up on my birthday. I got out a, a month after my birthday. So from 2012 to 2013, I did 13 months. From 2015 to 2019, I did 51 months. From 2020 to 21, I did 14 months. From 21 to 23, I did 16 months. Damn. So this is like the longest you've been out in a minute, right? This is as long as I've been out since my mama died. Yeah. So when everybody said I've been working with the police for 10, 15 years, stupid, I've been in jail. Do y'all research on me? Y'all want to know everything about me? It's on the internet. Explain the jail conditions too, because I heard you said it was it was uh, bad over there. Uh, which one? Uh, Rice Street? Rice County. Or Rice Street. Rice Street, yeah, Rice yeah. Street. you actually right around the corner from it. Um, yeah, it, it's bad for people that's really nobody. Uh, when I mean by nobody, I'm saying like don't have that... Um, support system mm-hmm. but living wise um it was bad for me because they put me in protective custody against my will i mean because a lot of people knew my family you feel me so yeah they preferred it and they knew other people uh so they preferred to keep me away so that i wouldn't be getting caught up in other stuff so a lot of the people there were trying to keep me out of stuff but having me locked down 23 hours a day and then sometimes 24 they just different type of crazy though. You would have way rather just been around normal people out there? To in the jail? Yeah. Right. Because when I'm in the dorm, like, people be saying all this. You feel what I'm saying? When I'm in the dorm, man, everybody want to chill and kick it. Mm. 
You feel what I'm saying? But I have been I have been in like a dorm with the enemies. You feel me? Like I got jumped on. But I didn't get on that door. You feel me? What do you mean by that? Um so I got to it with one of my ops. But he really wasn't an op, you feel what I'm saying, until he got some help. But I was he was a part of something and you know, we were getting into it, but now he got two, three more people to come help him. Now he want to pump, pump his chest out. But it's my fault. I should have did what I had to do to him before he got the help. Mm-hmm. But one day I was asleep, they came and woke me up. Hey, get on the door. I like, all right, let me get out of the bed. They wouldn't let me get out of the bed. I punched him in the mouth. Long story short, I punched him in the mouth, let him beat me up. And still stayed in there. Then after they beat me up, I waited on one on the split up. Um, they stayed in their group. So the first one walked out of their group when he got on the phone. I went over there and snuck him. And beat him up in the day room because, I, like I say, numbers. These gang members, they want to hide. I'm beating them up in the day room. The same ones who, y'all, y'all jump me in the room. Why y'all ain't jump me in the day room? Because they scary. Mm-hmm. Y'all read about the police like y'all love getting caught for. I beat them up in the day room. They took me on to the hole. They took, they took uh, the dude I jumped on to the hole and the dudes they jumped on me. Because they wind the whole camera back. But I ain't care. Would you say you're scared of going back to jail? or? So I plead the fifth. Mm-hmm. So you... you dislike being in there but would you say you live in fear of it i plead the fifth and i was willing to sit in jail two years so what you tell me mm. i told you you can't pay attention to the comments pay attention to what's coming out my mouth definitely we always end up having this conversation on the podcast like are the streets dead like would you advise a young person to even be into that way of life because a lot of people say with all the internet shit and all the uh, normalized telling and all the the you know securities, cameras. the cameras everywhere. So if you're looking at the streets, right? The streets repeats itself. Mm. The same dummies are dummies. The same gangsters are gangsters. So so that's why I had to realize the street rules on a plot to fools. You right here, you gotta live your life how you wanna live it. Mm. Run by how somebody if you you or think of you. That's stupid. Like you said, y'all up here, y'all doing podcasts, y'all interviewing street niggas. Y'all paying street niggas to come on here and talk about their business. So, like, like, like I tell my nephew now, man, listen, man, don't get caught up in that street stuff. Do what's beneficial to you. To you. Uh, make better the choices for you. Don't don't let nobody encourage you to go do nothing stupid. You, if you got to go do something to somebody, go by yourself. Because that's the only way I'm free. <coughs> um... All this stuff right here, man. People, I see people do something to you all the time. You do something bad, they go, even though they don't go tell, they go, hey, man, he did this and this, so that word get out in the street. Mm. Uh, man, please, man, I ain't, ain't standing the streets. I'm living. I got one life. I'm going to live this more. Yeah, how you how, how you taking to this newfound fame that you got? I know you fucking with it. Yeah, because the, the love is crazy. Like, man, girls be jumping out the car. You man. walking through the mall, people stopping you. And they all want hugs. Yo. You feel me? It ain't, and I need that because I be on the verge of crashing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause people, they sometimes people get to me, especially people they be doing like four hundred dollar interview. Yeah. You feel me? I give you that. Just watch my car, little boy. People be trying to get an interview for four hundred bucks. Not for me, oh, okay. but from people that really need it. That was a YSL Mondo reference. Clearly. Uh, he, I heard him say that. That's what they offered him. Oh, uh, so <laughs> now that was funny. Yeah, because it's like, I get on the internet, like, I'm being trolled. Yeah. I ain't even responding back to nobody. So why why am I, like, I got mad at you. You posted something, said I responded back to my door. I didn't respond back to my door. So, like like I said, the is make it difficult for me to post on the internet because I'm not entertaining no negativity. You yeah. feel me? Like, it's no secret on my side. If anybody want problems with me, they could DM me and be like, hey, punk ass nigga, where you at? I'm going to say, all right, here, wherever I'm at. Yeah. Bring your bad ass over here. I don't care about the police catching me or doing nothing to me. You ever did anger management? Damn, bro. I, I seen anger. Nah, you said you have <laughs> anger. <laughs> Man, you definitely be, you said you can get there, but you said you got anger problems. So, like, how you deal with your anger problems? Yeah, we, we ain't really seen the angry side we of you. We ain't seen it. We, we seen we the good side of you. This yeah. is the angry you side. You seem capable of it. That's why I keep distracting myself. Really? Because if I don't distract myself, I'd be not, um, I would not cause a lot of chaos. Right. Because I don't done it for years by myself. Yeah. And let everybody else take credit for it. Did you go through a phase of you getting fucked up to deal with shit like that? Or you just not into it? What you mean? 
the drugs, alcohol, whatever? Nah, it, anybody tell you I don't do no drugs. So I, it I never just, appealed to you? Huh? It just never appealed to you? Uh, my uncle been poisoned. Really? So, wow. like I said, I let everybody think I'm stupid. And um, I'm okay with it. Respect. Um, so what's next for Woody? Like, besides the trial and all that, after all this is over, like, what do you want in the future? Whatever God got in store for me. I just wake up and just follow the process. What, whatever path God laid out in front of me. Uh, I believe in God with all my heart. Uh, I trust in him. And that's just it. Yeah, you go to church every Sunday because you hit me this morning and said you was at church. I try. I, I walked out today, though, because we had a sister preacher and he went to my nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the same church you've been going to for a minute? Yeah, man. I got to ask my preacher why he went down. He should have let me know. Yeah. Yeah. I had them with me. I've been taking people from the neighborhood with me. Every weekend, I try to take somebody different. I mean, everybody invited. You a celebrity in the church, too? I tell people, don't don't, don't, don't start acting different towards me because you'll push me away. It's like, I'm already about to go back into my shell. I mean, because I don't like people treating me like I'm, I want to be treated equal. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's why I take pictures with people. Uh, and I tell, like, one dude, I just had to almost do it to him. And I had to let him know, you chase the clock, bro. The first boy took my picture and act like he knew where I stayed. If anybody with my address, I was glad to give it to them. But another boy just made a video. He put me in there, I'm laughing. But he go behind my back and whisper something out. And we took his phone. Yeah. Little boy, you get yourself hurt playing with me. I, I Don't let this internet play with I'm telling y'all, this in this left, don't, don't, don't do that. And that boy, he didn't want he thought I was playing with him. I let him know, hey, boy, you finna get yourself hurt right here on this camera at this store. And took his phone, delete that video out of his phone, and told him to go about the business and come back around his area. Don't yeah. care where he stay at. People need to stop playing with me like I'm somebody to play with. I keep telling them, like, I, I don't been in them situations where I had to take it there, and I would take it there. And I would not think twice about it. I would go home and sleep peacefully as hell like ain't nothing happened. Yeah. So how you deal with all the new fame? Because sometimes you never know who's looking at you because you got a whole bunch of people coming up to you to take pictures and shit. It's, it make you sometimes like, damn, who are these people looking at me? Nah, not really because I, I look at the eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like I said, if anybody want to cause me any pain or harm, you know, I can't prevent it. I'm not going to run from it. What was that the other day? You, they invited you to a college to speak? Yes. Uh, that was in Texas. Uh, they're good um, martial law school. Man, it was amazing, man. Them college girls, good gracious, they was out there. <laughs> so you never went to college or anything? Never, and I'm ready to go back out. I didn't even want to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's why we were we were asking people yesterday why there's so many fine-looking women around Atlanta, and that was one of the ex reasons why is, like, people were like, there's so many colleges, and colleges are mostly women, so there's just, like, a higher percentage out here. Man, you wouldn't believe me. I show them where my, my neighborhood I post on social media. Every day, I get flagged down by people that don't drove to this area looking for me. I'd be like, oh, I got to stop posting. Like, that's the thing. Because I got, I dropped my location in a heartbeat. Mm. And fans are actually pulling up. I'm just like, dang, they bring their kids and everything. Yeah. Like, they be flagging me down. So if you're, you're posted up on a random blog and you, you, you'll just post it on social media? Because I always wait till we leave. No, I post like, you see, I just post it in the parking lot. Right. I, once I take a picture, I post right in the there. It ain't me trying to provoke nobody to pull up and nothing like that, but what I'm waiting to leave for? Mm. I'm still right here. That's why a lot of people pull up so quick to pull up because they know I'm still there. For sure. What What are the main things you want to accomplish with your life? Um, I want to I wanna see us do better as a race and people. You feel what I'm saying? So if, if I can help you know, make people open their eyes and learn how to embrace each other. Just they, they mean more to me than anything. Are you voting? Can you vote? Cause uh, I know I, I know I can't remember her name, but uh, I guess uh, Fonnie Willis, the lady who's competing against her on the Republican side, she said if she gets elected, she's gonna drop the YSL trial immediately. Can What's I, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I highly doubt she could do that, right? Right. Uh, I I stay out, I stay out of this stuff. You feel me? Because like I said, vote our votes really don't matter. Yeah. You feel me? I don't believe in our, nah, I don't believe in the voting system at all. This is like with the president, the popular vote always go to the person they lose. What's the purpose of everybody voting then? Mm. But I don't I don't, I don't know how it works. I don't care about it. Yeah. Um, whoever anybody can be the president. I don't care. But you call it cap, you don't think she she would uh drop it if she was elected? Because you gotta understand, um, 
People say anything to get in that position. Yeah. And what they do when they get in that position? Give you the edge kiss. What's your thoughts on Miss Love? <clears throat> Miss Love? Yeah. What you mean? Isn't she the prosecutor of one of them? Uh, you seen 101 Damish? Yeah, Miss Dalfour. Corella DeVille. Cor Corella DeVille. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, uh, Woody, thank you for your time. Appreciate you, man. Legendary. I can understand why you're so in demand for interviews as we sit here, because it's just some, like, you just never know what the fuck this guy's going to say. <laughs> it's amazing. And I be holding back. Yeah. Because I know so many people watching, waiting on me to slip up, say yeah. the wrong thing. I bet your interviews are going to be quite different a few years from now, too. Once you're a little bit more free with what you can say. I can't wait to expose everything that these people don't did. Damn. So we got to do part two in the future. Woody. No Jumper. Coolest podcast. Thank you, Remo. Like, comment, subscribe. Bow.